Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And this is Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 1. Oh boy, where it all started and where you and every other male friend I have kept going, you need to watch this. <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much just, oh, new channel called The Hub. Interesting. Looked at the stuff they were advertising for it. Transformers. Ooh, that new My Little Pony looks interesting. I'll give it a shot. And then I went, wow, that's pretty good. I, I pretty much, like, fell for it in the first two episodes. <laughs> like, most people would like, well, I didn't really follow in love with the show and call myself a brony until when a wrap-up. <laughs> like, no, I, I liked it a lot from the start. I think it's because it was so much better than anything else on TV at the time. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't say for certain what episode I finally got hooked at, because I watched the premiere, and then I watched Ticketmaster, and then I stopped watching it until you guys kept bugging me again. I remember you liking Ticketmaster for the fact it did something different with that type of plot. Yes, because usually it's either you gave up the tickets, the two friends go instead, feel guilty, come back, and you all have fun, or nobody goes and you all have fun. Though considering how the gala turned out, maybe nobody should have gone. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think Celestia planned that. She knew they would liven it up in some way, and she didn't care how, because she was bored to tears at every gala. So she's like, okay, I've seen her friends. Yeah, they're going to lab this in this place up. <laughs> and then that brings up the question of why didn't she invite all of them from the start? Well... The way Celestia does things is she likes Twilight to learn the lessons on her own. So if she would have given her all of the tickets at once, Twilight might not have learned a lesson. Alright, so jumping backwards from episode 3 to the series pilot. <laughs> Whoops, we were supposed to start with that one, weren't we? <laughs> yes. And like everyone else, we can make all the parallels between this and the Gen 1 opener. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're expecting me to summarize that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know them best. Um, okay, Night of Eternal Darkness, your weapon ends up being a rainbow. You go on a quest, you cross a rickety bridge. You have an unwilling hero, and the original in the form of Megan, who is essentially kidnapped by Firefly. <laughs> yes, brilliant move there, Firefly. <laughs> yeah, bring back an ordinary human girl, where in this case... Twilight Sparkle would be our Megan as, wait, I have to go where and do what? <laughs> Being the unwilling, oh man. And fortunately we skipped the song number equivalents of Dancing on Air in the Sea Pony song. The, though the song of search that the Moochick sings for finding the piece of rainbow is marginally better. And we got a nice piece from Pinkie Pie, Giggle at the Ghosties. I think that's the first song ever in the series. Yeah, and they acknowledge in the series that both that she's singing and that it's ridiculous to be doing so. Yeah, I remember that was actually one of the things that made me fall for the show was the fact of like, oh my god, they're not taking themselves seriously. <laughs> this is great, and they're pointing out how, wait a minute, she's bursting into songs? <laughs> is she doing what I think she's doing? She is. <laughs> Yeah, but what we see later with the rock farm, who was Granny Pie that she said all of that? We've seen the rock farm. Well, maybe Granny Pie isn't living there and is somewhere else, and she's where Pinkie Pie gets her zanius from. You know, because genetically I'm hoping it comes from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked Nightmare Moon's design. Very much so. And I was okay with the whole setting up tests for everyone scenario. Though I am also one of the people who is kind of iffy with the way Applejack's test was supposed to test her honesty. Yeah, that's not so much honesty as trust me. Mm hmm. Trust that what I think they were trying to go for trust that what I'm saying is true. <laughs> that you'll be okay. It's still kind of a roundabout way to get there. Mm hmm. And laughter is just a overall general one that's kind of hard to like. How do you pin down that as. Well, laughing at scary trees. Yes, that works. Well, you had to give her something to 
laugh at and you had to show that laughter was powerful. And then there's Rarity's test of generosity, which was kind of nice, especially with the Rainbow Dash going, you know, it grows back. <laughs> yeah, my my problem with Rarity's test is, okay, so you fixed his mustache, but you ruined his scales. <laughs> you You fixed one part while wrecking another. How could he possibly be happy now? He's <laughs> missing a scale. This is a very uh, image conscious sea serpent. I never even thought of that. <laughs> Once again, you point out things that I don't even think of. And this is why you work so well together on here. Well, and here I thought it was because you're monotone when you talk by yourself. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Fluttershy is, is a nice one. The classic thorn in the paw that no one notices until the kind person goes, wait, 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 wait. There it is. Yank. <laughs> They're all better now. And then we move on to Rainbow Dashes. The classic test of loyalty. Hey, we got something nice over here. We want you to be a part of it. You want, we want you to be our leader. Come on. You want it? Come on. We know you want it. Yeah. And Rainbow Dash is like, yeah, that sounds awesome, but give me just a minute, okay? <laughs> now we move on to the castle and where Twilight needs to figure out how the elements of harmony work. Because currently it looks like they're completely inert. Yeah, even though it's been shoved down her throat all episode. Well, it's some type of spark. She doesn't know what that spark is. And she doesn't know that elements of harmony represent individual traits in ponies. No, but she knows what the elements are, and each pony has exhibited a trait, which leaves the mystery one for her. And there's a slight confrontation between Nightmare Moon and her. They get teleported to another part of the castle, and their friends go, Oh, we must help Twilight! They run over there. Twilight does some really neat trickery by making it look like she's charging directly at Nightmare Moon, and then teleport behind her. What? <laughs> That's a good bait and switch. <laughs> yes. Especially when Nightmare Moon goes, You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but winking is very useful. It didn't come at all in handy in the Gen 1 season premiere. We just got to see that it existed. And so we get our powered up super weapons and are now officially a magical girl team. Yes, it's a lot of magical girl going throughout this series. But this is the first time we're like, wow, not only is this magical girl, it could also be Power Rangers. <laughs> yes, which is Sentai, which is a lot like magical girl, just less girly. And then we get rainbow powered. Rainbows heal and kill everything! <laughs> and then we get the reveal that Nightmare Moon is actually Princess Celestia's sister? Why didn't anyone else realize this? It's kind of like in the intro and it's in the story tales. So why did they suddenly go, <gasps> really? <laughs> um, because I'm thinking that somehow nobody associates the legends with actual people. Because that would be scary. Never mind that no pony can remember when Celestia wasn't Princess of Equestria. I'm just glad they've, throughout the show, changed the definition of what the word princess actually means in Equestria. Because it was a good way to get around the fact that Hasbro didn't want Celestia to be Queen Celestia, which is how she was originally written by Lauren Faust. Yeah, but if there's no one of higher rank, but... It's just like, really? It has to be princess? It really doesn't have to be princess. Nope, but she went with it and made it a very important actual leading role. Yes. So, was there anything else you wanted to say about the premiere or Ticketmaster, since we already talked about Ticketmaster? Nope, we can move on to whatever you feel like moving on to next. Apple Buck season was good, but the next episode that bugged me was the griffin brush off oh okay so here is the first episode barring the premiere where we had a, a manticore and a sea serpent but we introduce a character who is on equal footing with the ponies another intelligent species that coexists with the ponies hmm. and what do we do we have this we turn griffin. them into a bully <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so what is the lesson? The lesson is that you should ditch your old friends for your new friends because your old friends are actually jerks and your new friends are the same species you are, so you should stick with your own kind. Interpretation is wonderful. <laughs> or, correction, interpretation is magic. <laughs> yeah, because there are so many 
other paths that could have taken where we could have learned other valuable lessons? I mean, I know the lesson they were going for was don't hang around toxic personalities, which is a good lesson. But we take a species that we've just introduced and basically get rid of the only character from that species who's been introduced. All in one episode. I guess that's why me and you really want more griffins and other mythical creatures to be shown outside of being an antagonist introduced to just that episode. And it's kind of funny, I didn't get any of that from the first watching. I think this is one of the first episodes where I really, really started to like Pinkie Pie because she's just zany and she cares for her friends. Especially in that one scene at the beginning where Rainbow Dash is like, oh yeah, let's prank Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie's like, no! Even the kindest prank she'd take wrong. We can't do that. We don't want to make Fluttershy cry. Cough, Philly Finley, cough. <laughs> I think that was probably the best part of the episode because it shows that while they were doing the pranks in good fun, they understood that there were boundaries. And it also showed that those two actually did have something in common because before it seems like, actually it seems before the main six met each other in the premiere episode, they knew each other. It's just they weren't anything more than... Oh, I kind of have to deal with this person on a semi-daily basis, so they're kind of nice. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see, Twilight's the one who kind of threads them all together. And even though Pinkie Pie later confesses to be friends with the entire town <laughs> and everyone she's ever met or will meet. She also has a memory like a steel trap. <laughs> yeah. But this shows that um, being together like this has increased their um, friendship levels, as it were. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Though there are several hints that some of them knew each other, you know, more deeply, like uh, Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash actually were together up in Cloudsdale when they were younger. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they really knew each other, they just kind of went to school together. Which can bring us to the Sonic Rainboom episode. Yes, where we show how everyone was all affected by Rainbow Dash. Actually, I was talking about the actual Sonic Rainbow episode, not the episode where we find out where they get their cutie marks. Ah. Yeah, I get those two mixed up a lot, too. Because <laughs> the name of the episode where we see the Sonic Rainbow was actually the Sonic Rainbow. The name of the episode where we find out what their cutie marks are that are connected to the Sonic Rainbow is, I think, called the Cutie Mark Chronicles. You want to talk about Sonic Rainbow? Yeah, we can always jump back if we skipped over another one you wanted to talk about. Yeah. So, i.e. the excuse for Hasbro to release Flutter Pony-style ponies. You're talking about the wings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the episode overall because it showed, this is another episode where they started to show that the characters have more depth than an usual cartoon show. Because we see even though Rainbow Dash is brash and overconfident, there are times where her confidence just completely fails her. And she becomes this quivering mess of a person going, I, it's, it's staged, I can't know. <laughs> but we have more of a negative of rarity because in the beginning she's like, can't you see that Rainbow Dash needs our support? And by the end of the episode, she's completely taken over the show. Mm-hmm. Still showing more depth, though. No, still showing depth, but we go from Rarity being the only one to see that Rainbow Dash needs support to completely forgetting to support Rainbow Dash and competing directly against her. Not that friends can't enter competitions together. We also get the famous scene of... Louder! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Eternally classic. Mm-hmm. Well... I want to go backwards because the opposite or on the other hoof lesson that correlates to Griffin Brushoff is bridal gossip. We have a negative impression of the zebra Zakora that by the end of the episode we learn that we shouldn't prejudge. But hmm, so let's see. So the griffin who has fur, wings, feathers, bad. Zebra who is also a four-hooved animal that lives on the ground like a pony, is actually good. All these things you see, especially when they're completely different than the stuff other people have talked about about this particular episode, about how the characters are out of character, how it's just kind of badly written, stuff like that. And I remember thinking none of that when I was watching. I was like, Except for one thing, I knew where the story was going. It was going to be the classic, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> yeah, but I was a little doubtful of that because I already had the fake out from Griffin Brush Off. It's like, I <laughs> thought we were doing that, and then we didn't. So are we really going to do it this time? 
Or is Zakora really going to actually be an evil witch? The episode itself may be a little wonky, but we got an awesome character out of it is all I have to say. <laughs> Uh, though if you think about it, Zakara's kind of a mixed bag in her of herself. She's portrayed positively a lot, but she's also a very stereotypical character with her accent, where she comes from, and stuff like that. Yeah, it would be nice to have more zebras so we have something to compare her to and maybe see something unique about her. Instead of, oh, I have all these masks and jewelry from my homeland, and I live in the Everfree Forest, and no one ever says why. <laughs> why does Zakora live away from other zebras, and why didn't she just move directly into Ponyville? I'm thinking she didn't move directly into Ponyville because she was closer to a lot of the herbs she uses for what she does. Plus, she probably studies the natural wildlife there, or her territory may be more like the Everfree Forest, except without all the nasty magical stuff. Though, if she's African, like we assume she is, she probably lives in an open plains area, though. Another episode you want to speak specifically about? Of course! We have two other episodes, really. One is, of course, Humeric Chronicles, where we find out where everyone is connected in ways they didn't know of. A very well done episode, very enjoyable, especially when we find out, wait, 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 Pinky lived on a rock farm? <laughs> yeah, that was the best part. It, except that it's like, why is it called a rock farm? It really should be a quarry. And it looks like her family's almost Amish in a way, so they could also explain why Pinky is, um, you know, has moved away because she might not understand about the Amish. The Amish kind of do that. They allow their kids to go out and explore the world, then they can decide whether to stay out there or come back in and live with them. So that's probably what happened to Maud and Pinky. <laughs> they decided to go out, find the world, and went, the world's awesome! Especially Pinky. And Maud <laughs> just went, all these rocks. I am so happy right now. Can't you tell? Yes. Other than the, oh my gosh, we all had a connection that we didn't know about previously. <laughs> Which to me seemed a little like, really? You know I love Cadence and Shining, but we have Twilight Sparkle flashbacks with no Cadence and no Shining. It just points out how much of a retcon they are. Unless at that particular time with that Summer of Sun celebration, he was actually off training. But that's just headcanon. <laughs> yeah, but you would think that during the flashback, since we get to see her parents, you know, we may have maybe seen her brother? Oh yeah, and we shouldn't forget about Art of the Dress. That was an awesome episode. And it was definitely one of the episodes where people started to fall in love with Rarity. Specifically because of that awesome song. Yes, it's an amazing song. And I think it really gave us a lot of insight into Rarity's character. Because even though she's the element of generosity, she tends to come across a bit shallow since she's such a fashionista. But this really showed, even just if you use the song alone, you know, her caring for her friends, her commitment to her art style, which is, you know, her fashion design, and her desire to please her clients. It also really shows you her original intended element, the element of creativity. But it also shows her element of generosity because she's so generous towards everyone, even her clients. And generosity doesn't have to be giving a physical item to someone, it could be giving your time or your patience to them as well. Mm -hmm. And all the time she spends making and remaking the dresses because she wants them to be happy. Because if they're not pleased with it, then it doesn't matter what she thinks of it. Because what she's designing isn't for herself, it's for others. Ah, and that's why she is an excellent element of generosity. But moving on to the episode where everyone really started to like Pinky. Also one of the first episodes where a pony goes mad. <laughs> <laughs> Party of one? <laughs> <laughs> and this is an episode where it definitely submitted, cemented in me the fact that Pinkie Pie is an awesome beyond awesome character. Also... Bags of flour or cannibals? Madame LaFlower was having cake. Yes, very disturbing. But if you look at the cake, it has strawberries on it. Or some sort of berry. The turnips are a vegetable. So, plants eating plants? Uh, there's just so many things wrong with that scene. And I also like later of, at least you weren't compared to a bucket of turnips. What? Never mind. <laughs> or at least I wasn't compared to a bucket of turnips. <laughs> 
Oh god, I'm arguing with a pail of rocks! <laughs> Though, if you think about it, the only thing that's really wrong with the episode overall is the fact that Pinky forgot her own birthday. Though, I've been known to forget my own birthday until just the day before when someone goes, Oh, tomorrow's your birthday, right? Oh yeah, it is! <laughs> Yeah, but Pinkie Pie's always so busy planning parties for other people and ponies and pets. Hmm. And I just have another episode we forgot to go over. The one where bronies became bronies, apparently. Everyone remembers it as the one episode where, yep, I love this show. Winter wrap-up. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I asked you where else you wanted to go, and as a Pinkie Pie fan, you jumped to the Pinkie Pie episode. So, of course, we can go backwards to winter wrap-up. Well, we weren't really planning on doing this chronologically anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, so we're kind of okay. So, why don't you go with your thoughts first on the episode? Oh, I enjoyed it. I like the song. It's catchy. It, it's just like, really, we have to manually change the seasons? <laughs> it, it, it doesn't happen on its own? <laughs> I think the only place that it happens on its own is maybe some place outside of Equestria and in the Everfree Forest. And I know that them never finishing on time gives Twilight a place to shine, but they would have had to deal with this since Ponyville was founded back when Granny Smith was just a filly. So you would think they'd kind of have the hang of it by now. Though with how disorganized they seemed, it could have been a thing that was perpetually getting worse. True, you know. Because, um, I was gonna say, ponies move in, ponies move out, ponies live, ponies die. I should say ponies get born, ponies die, so there's a change of staff, so it could have been a problem that was getting worse because of new people and stuff like that, so things just started falling through. <laughs> yeah, but if you can all manage to learn the song... And that is a very catchy song. I like the episode, and I'm pretty sure it's the song that did it for a lot of people, because that's how very well put together song it sums up everything it tells a story and it's catchy as heck thank you daniel ingram <laughs> very enjoyable and really gives us the feeling that oh yeah twilight is an outsider she hasn't lived in ponyville that long she doesn't know what to do she doesn't know how to fit in and everyone always worries about fitting in mm -hmm. and this shows that she does have a talent outside of magic mainly because of all her studying habits and everything. But she's a damn good organizer, and it shows once again that she is a, le a leader type of personality. Mm -hmm. Though you could also say that about Applejack. She has a tendency to kind of be the second in command when it comes to falling back on leadership. Mm -hmm. But if we look at Applejack's unexplained past, we have an older brother, we have a grandmother, we have no parents. That kind of um, forces one to become more independent. Mm -hmm. I think it's also why the writers seem to have such a problem writing for her, because she pretty much already has everything she wants and needs in life. Yeah, she's very much a developed character, and unless and until she finds a new goal or desire, or a hardship other than we need to make money to keep the farm, who keeps bankrupting the farm? We had to worry about it with selling the apple cider. We had to worry about it with the zap apples. So do you think we're ready to move on to the season finale? Ah, uh, yes. Let's go ahead and go to the gala. <laughs> to the gala. I would sing, but that would hurt people's ears. <laughs> yeah. Another kick-ass song. <laughs> I mean, it changes its tone in the middle, becomes a kind of pop rock song, then goes back to the kind of floatiness that it is, and it like changes its tone depending on the character that's singing it. Like when it's Fluttershy, it's light and airy. When it's Rarity, it has a certain feel to it. When it's Twilight, it has a feel to it. It gets a little bit country when we talk about Applejack. It becomes a rock uh, pop song when we have Rainbow Dash's point of view, and it just has a chorus in it and everything. <laughs> and you have everyone so excited to be at the gala. And everything looks peachy keen until this is boring as heck, heck, and I'm not getting anything I actually wanted. My foot's sore from all this shaking. I haven't had a chance to talk with Celestia. You will love me! <laughs> Why is no one buying all my apple fritters? 
This guy's an ass! Uh, we also find out that Soren is a big fan of apple pie. I think Soren is just a big fan of eating. <laughs> well, considering how much workouts he gets for being a Wonder World, he probably eats a lot. But I'm guessing pies and stuff like that are guilty pleasures for him. Mm -hmm. And then Pinkie Pie finds out, like, it's not that kind of party. And then she's like, really? I'll make it this kind of party. No, we didn't mean that either. Oh, we also forgot to mention that in the very first episode where we f is where we first see the character that becomes fan known as Derpy. <laughs> <laughs> and what reminded me of that is the fact that in this episode, we get a fan character who later becomes known as Octavia. <laughs> <laughs> These characters like appear for like a second and suddenly they got hordes and hordes of fans. <laughs> Dr. Hooves, anyone? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think the first season overall was a good start to this series, and it showed what potential it had to be what it is now. Yeah, and we had a nice build-up, because we hear about the gala early on. We touch on it again with the dressmaking episode, and then we have it as the finale. So even though each episode can stand alone, counting the pilot as a single, because two-parters mm -hmm. can't stand alone, each episode leads us towards this event you know it doesn't just come out of nowhere we have an actual progression mm -hmm. and speaking of the heart of the dress episode in that song apparently there's foreshadowing to events that happen throughout the next three seasons <laughs> like the part about fluttershy's um can't remember exactly how it goes but it says something about being breezy <laughs> no for fluttershy something breezy and then Something about Pinkie Pie's, well, isn't that cheesy? And then the other ones don't really stand out to me. Uh, well, it's there for everyone. You can find it online at Equestria Daily. That's where I found out about it. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 1. And if you liked my work, please visit me over on DeviantArt. Want to know what we're up to? Look for updates on Tumblr. Did we cover your favorite episode from Season 1? Did we totally miss it? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and talk to you soon. And here's an outtake from this episode. Let's see. Let's start with the usual, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux Brush. And this is Ember. And we're back! Why? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on this episode. They probably would if it was an episode and not a season. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Thank you for correcting me there. <laughs> Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Season 1 of My Little Pony. Did we cover your favorite episode from Season 1? Did we totally miss it? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were talking to me! <laughs> uh, I'm talking to the internet! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, internet! <laughs> uh, don't steal Game Theory's introduction.